This month's podcast features students from Durfee High School in Fall River and Needham High School as they reflect on the return of full in-person instruction for the 2021-2022 school year. In this episode, you'll hear students from Durfee High School share their excitement returning to a brand new state-of-the-art building. It was exciting. I love the smell. The smell was brand new, brand new school smell. I was very excited too. It's, it was just breathtaking. And from students from Needham High School looking forward to gathering back with friends and classmates. Like extracurriculars aside, it's just being around my friends because most of my friends were in the other cohort, so I never got to see them. And I would rarely see them on the weekends, things like that. So that's mainly my big thing that I'm looking forward to. For me, I'm personally looking forward to being able to work as groups in school because doing everything by yourself, while it makes you feel very independent, it's very annoying to not have other people to like look on to or help you with something. And how students from both schools are not quite ready for health and safety protocols to be relaxed just yet. I don't feel like we are ready. I feel like we should have some other things mandated before we take the mask off. But I'm definitely will keep my mask on and Hopefully other people will keep them on too. I don't really think I want to go mask optional at this point because cases are rising. They are not going down and I think taking our masks off would just not be a good idea in the slightest. I, I'm totally fine with taking them off outside, but I feel like it'd be a terrible idea to take them off inside, especially because my classes this year are extremely full. This podcast was created by JFY Networks a Boston-based nonprofit provider of online learning programs to schools, students, and parents. JFY's individualized self-paced curricula help raise individual and school performance measures by maintaining and achieving grade-level skills. JFY provides online ELA and math curricula aligned to state and college standards from grade 5 through high school, with personal support on-site, online, or via telephone from friendly online learning specialists like yours truly. JFY supports all educational communities and provides free scholastic resources on our website at jfynet.org. For JFY Networks, I'm Greg Cunningham. For the first time in about 18 months, students were welcomed back to schools in Massachusetts with all instruction taking place in person. With specific COVID-19 protocols in place, students and teachers can feel safe about returning to the classroom every day. For Bailey, Jack, and Jason, three Needham High School seniors, the return to school this year felt like any other normal year, with a few additions to the daily routine. It's honestly pretty much the same as pre-COVID, except we're wearing masks. And I think it's pretty nice to just be around everyone at the same time, because last year, A, you didn't really get to see your friends all the time, and B, it was really difficult to build relationships with your teachers specifically. And although we're only like a week into school, I can already sense that it's going to be a lot easier to form those connections with teachers. On top of that, I would just like to add that teachers don't seem to be as stressed about COVID anymore. I had a teacher that always wore two masks and always was staying as far away from us as possible. And now she, well, she still is a little bit cautious, but definitely not even close to where she was. I would say that people still are COVID safe. I know many of my teachers are very strict about wearing your mask over your nose and stuff like that. However, it's definitely starting to feel more like regular school. It's a lot on a teacher to teacher basis. It changes a lot. I know some teachers will not put like desks next to each other while other teachers are fine with putting table groups together. So yeah, it's a lot about the personal preferences of the teacher, but we're definitely heading in the right direction overall. Having a hybrid model last year when students spent part of a week attending school in person and the rest working from home allowed students more flexibility than going to school each day, 
but also created distractions for students as well. I mean, I think just because of the grade that we were in last year, it was stressful. But I think had we been freshmen or I think specifically sophomores last year, it wouldn't have been that stressful. But I think just because of the classes that we were taking, it tend to be stressful. But I think like not being in school full time also helped with the stress because I know I was able to get a lot more work done during the day because let's say I was taking an online class and I didn't particularly need to pay that close attention. I could do my other classwork during that class class and not have to like hide it or something. So I also liked online classes a lot, although they probably, I didn't learn nearly as much as I should have. I really enjoyed them because when you had them, you got to sleep in, you got to not pay close attention. You know, you got to do other work on the side. You got to play games if you're me. Um, But Overall, I, I think in school is just better as a whole. And even though it's a little bit more annoying that you can't do as many things, I think for my education, it'll just be more beneficial. So going off the stress question again, I would say that last year, I mean, we're only two weeks into the school year, but I would say last year, the teachers really held back. I was definitely stress the whole year but consistently in many of my classes teachers would say oh because we're virtual or oh because of covid we're not doing so and so like we normally would which i don't know i feel like makes sense because many of the teachers didn't teach online very effectively and weren't able to cover as much as they would be able to in person but it definitely led to a a less stressful environment with more personal work instead of do this work during class, then you do this homework. It mainly felt like, okay, here's time, do work and homework, do whatever you can to get done. And it generally led to less work and less difficult work even. Having online classes may have led to fewer topics covered, but possibly to more focus on the necessary topics to ensure students' success. Even though like maybe we didn't learn as much as we possibly could have during that year, honestly, most of the stuff that we learned last year, we aren't really going to use this year. And like, for example, something that's not like that is like pre-calc. We didn't get to do all of the units, but as a result of that, we just had to do some summer work. But let's say I didn't get to all the units in chemistry last year. That is not going to affect me in any way because I'm not going to use that in my life. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, we learned all the fundamentals that we need to know and we didn't really learn much else. So every single class got all the important things out of the way as fast as possible. And so we only had a little bit of time for other fancier, more extravagant things, but I mean, for the most part, everything that we needed to know, they got out there and they did an effective job at teaching it. So a lot of the stuff, we covered everything that was really important. I didn't feel like any classes really cut re- cut something out of the curriculum that was helpful for the future and helpful for learning or helpful for essay writing, especially in classes like the AP classes, which have a set curriculum that they need to teach for a test at the end of the year, they were still able to teach that stuff, but it felt like there was less work that physically accompanied it rather than just the typical year where there's an immense amount of work, but also you just learn the same concepts. A lot of what was, what needed to be taught was taught. The college application process is always a stressful time of year for seniors, but added variables to the process again this year has taken a stressful process and made it even more arbitrary than usual. I mean, I'm hoping that it goes more back to normal because I know last year it was extremely competitive, especially because two years prior, so people going to 2020, Um, A lot of people delayed their admissions and then it got pushed to 
uh, last year. So hopefully that won't affect our year as much, but I think there's also people say that it's more difficult because of test optional because schools won't be able to see that. But even when schools say they're test optional, they're not really test optional. Like that's in cases where they know like you're in some situation where you will not be able to take whatever test you want to take. So if we don't submit test scores, I think that there's some disadvantage there. I kind of agree. I think that for the most part, it's going to be heading back to normal, but it's not going to be fully normal because there's still going to be some effects. I mean, everyone is now getting used to COVID and getting used to how it's working. And as time, it's getting less and less of it's becoming less and less of a problem. So, I mean, obviously, we don't know at all what's going to happen and if it's going to be difficult, but I think it'll be slightly easier than last year. Yeah, I do think last year there were probably, I, I know many seniors who were struggling to go, get into any of the schools they wanted to apply to. And basically what I'm trying to say is it will be more competitive than a typical year. It won't be, I'm hoping it won't be as competitive as last year. I don't think it will be, but I don't know. It's shaky. It's uncertain exactly what the process is going to be like. Accepting the decisions of admissions committees will be tough, but understanding an acceptance or rejection from a college does not and should not define a student will be more important than ever this year. I think for all of us, we push ourselves to work hard and aim to get into good schools. But something that I've been trying to tell myself and I know my family's been telling me that even if I don't get into the school top schools that I want to get into, it's not necessarily because my scores weren't high enough, my essays weren't good enough, whatever. But even if you're good enough to get in, they may not accept you because it's on this whole process. It's a game. And this game got a little bit harder because of the pandemic. So, I mean, obviously, if I don't get into whatever school that I apply early decision to, it's going to hurt. I'm going to be upset. But I think we all have to remind ourselves that it's not because we're not good enough, but just the process is just terrible. I personally, um, I mean, I agree with that completely, but I personally like to live by the motto. Well, it's not really a motto, but I like to believe that whatever school I get into is going to be a great school because no matter where I go, I'm going to have a great time and I'm going to enjoy it. For me, my story is slightly different. Um, I do think that I'm not sure if it's completely because of the pandemic necessarily, but I would say there is still a lot of pressure to get into a good school, even if it's self pressure or just social pressure, social norms, and the expectation to be the best you has sort of been heightened, I think, in this pandemic, because you need to be the best you you can be in order to feel good about yourself, if this is making any semblance of sense. But yeah, the difficult, the more difficult process and the more competitors makes me personally feel like I need to prove myself worthy of getting into a top school and I guess my expectations are higher than they probably should be and the pressure is definitely heightened because I just want to be done with it you know like it's it's that every year but you want to feel satisfied at the end of the whole whole college process. Needham High School has expanded activities from what was allowed last year, and many students are looking forward to getting back to interests they missed. But last year also provided a time to pause, reflect, and step back to see a broader view of time commitments. I think for me, the main thing, like extracurriculars aside, is just being around my friends because most of my friends were in the other cohort, so I never got to see them. And I would rarely see them on the weekends, things like that. So that's mainly my big thing that I'm looking forward to. 
And extracurricular wise, like obviously it's nice to be in person with clubs again, because you can actually be able to like talk to other people. But for me, like I do fencing. And so last year, because of the pandemic, I was still able to go to practice, but I didn't compete the entire year. That was partially caused by COVID, but also I took a step back just like, so I could focus on other things. And I kind of realized that that was pretty good for me. And so I kind of now have this pressure to go back into it and get back at the same pace that I was at pre-pandemic um, because obviously there's less restrictions, but I'm pretty hesitant to, not, not really because of COVID, but just because I realized that like a lot of the extracurriculars that we were doing beforehand was just putting a lot of pressure on ourselves. And I noticed that for me, like mental health wise, I'm just a lot better when I was able to focus on other things. For me, I'm personally looking forward to being able to work as groups in school because doing everything by yourself while it makes you feel very independent it's very annoying to not have other people to like look on to or help you with something and if you're doing something wrong then it's almost impossible to know that you're doing something wrong unless there's someone else in a group in terms of extracurriculars for me so i play squash and we play squash with like a mask and a head gear, not head gear, uh, face, face shield. shield. Um, <laughs> and it's very hard to play and it's very hard to breathe and you get exhausted immediately and you need to take long breaks. So I'm hoping that by the winter season, we'll be able to play without masks and mostly normal. But even if we have to play with masks, I'm hoping that we can meet up and do things outside or just in safer environments that just would make, it would just make the whole experience a lot better. I do think for me that the extracurricular being virtual last year was very difficult. The extracurricular activities being virtual last year was really tough for speech and debate. It was difficult to perform while being on the other side of a camera. I'm in robotics, which wasn't able to run last year because of this whole thing. And I don't know, there were a lot of clubs that I was in that weren't able to run properly or effectively. And it was really annoying. And this year, now that we're in person, it's really nice to be able to just to just do it normally. For the most part, all of my extracurriculars are going back to normal, which I love, I enjoy, I like getting back into the into the swing of things. But yeah, that's that's one of the biggest pieces of this whole thing going away. Just being able to return to normalcy in that sense. Protocols will remain in place for the foreseeable future. Some students are hoping protocols like mask wearing will eventually be phased out. But not all students are looking for a complete removal of protocols just yet. We have to fill out an attestation. Basically, you have to fill out a form before coming to school every morning that says, hey, I don't have a fever. I don't have any COVID symptoms. Let me into school. And they're really pushing for us to do them for the sole purpose of us eventually being able to take masks off. Because if we get to like consistently like 95 percent, then that's like part of the process of us being able to be mask optional. But for me personally, I don't really think I want to go mask optional at this point because cases are rising. They are not going down. And I think taking our masks off would just not be a good idea in the slightest. I, I'm totally fine with taking them off outside, but I feel like it'd be a terrible idea to take them off inside, especially because my classes this year are extremely full and we're very close together. And if they were to go mask optional, it would just not go well. While I understand both of your sentiments, for me, I'm tired of the masks. I understand like the safety risks and all of that. And like, but I, if this health form is able to tell the school that we are healthy and we get to a certain level where we get to a certain level where people are staying healthy while wearing masks and no one is getting sick and our community for the most part is safe while filling out this form, I think it's definitely worth it to continue filling out. I think working towards 
mask optionality, if that's a word, is a goal for me. And I've heard many people talking that they just want the masks to come off. I've heard some people say they just want to take it off now and like whatever, which I don't I don't completely agree with. I do think there are definitely a lot of cases, but the school is taking it safely. At Durfee High School in Fall River, this year's return to school not only featured the ability for all students to attend in-person classes every day, but also the opening of a brand new $264 million school. As the Fall River Herald News recently reported, the new building features floor-to-ceiling windows, natural lighting in all classrooms, and a feel more like a college campus than a high school, with plenty of space both inside and outside for students to gather. The hallways are wide and feature natural wood designs, a far cry from the concrete walls of the old building. Each classroom is equipped with a Promethean board, an interactive screen that functions as a massive computer monitor, and the building features an observatory and a planetarium that rivals one at the Museum of Science in Boston. Walking into a brand new building provided a great boost to students, as Durfee High School seniors Megan and Andro explain. It was exciting. I love the smell. The smell was brand new, brand new school smell. I was very excited too. It's, it was just breathtaking. Yes, it's a very beautiful building. Very. While many students are happy to be back to full-time in-person instruction, returning to school with over 2,000 students does present some added challenges this year. It's nice. It's, it's, it's scary. Yeah. Kind of scared. It's, you know, we're kind of still in a, the midst of a pandemic. And there's some kids that still don't know how to wear their masks. Yeah, that is one thing. But it is also nice to be able to see everybody and be around our friends again and have, like, face-to-face -face conversations again. Love the classes. I have all good teachers, so, you know, they're going to help us out. Both Megan and Andro are part of Durfee High School's early college program, taking college courses provided by Bridgewater State University as part of their regular school schedule, and they enjoy the challenges these courses provide. Oh, I love them. Oh, I love it too. I like I it. I love the BSC. I've never had a bad experience with any of the classes I've taken. Even though both students have been exposed to college courses already, the prospect of moving on to college next year still presents challenges, and the ongoing pandemic could make the application process even more of a challenge than usual. College is scary because it's a new chapter, so that's one thing. You have to get over the obstacle of growing up, but I think we'll all be okay. We have a lot of people to guide us and help us with it. Yeah, I started applying to colleges. It's definitely not as hard as I would say for the other generations before us because definitely some colleges have made it more simple for us. You know, most of them are test optional now, but they do make it seem like it's better if you do put a test score, but I definitely can't. If we didn't get a good grade on the SATs, which is okay. We were in a pandemic when I took it. Yeah. As Megan and Andro point out, the hybrid learning model last year may have hindered the learning process in some classes and may have an impact once they enroll in college full time next year. In some ways, yeah. I do believe that some classes you kind of got the, like the cheap way out, like the easy way, because the teachers were like, here's your Google assignment and that's it. So in some classes we didn't learn too much, but there was other classes definitely where we did learn to our full potential and they made it the most that they could. Yeah, I. there were some classes, most like math, really, I don't remember anything from Algebra 2, which is very, very much has affected my pre-calc skills. I can say that. I can say it, but I hope, I think the professors will you know, remember that we were in a pandemic. And they should be understanding of most things, too. Definitely. I hope yeah. they do. I hope they 
you know, support us, give us extra support. The return to high school full-time also allows students to participate in other aspects of school life they were unable to experience at Durfee last year. Events. Pep rally, homecoming. Homecoming. Prom. Prom, yes. Football games. I love football games. Having just like everybody gather around each other and have fun is one thing that we didn't do at all last year. So that this is very exciting to do this year. Yeah, just football games, football games. I'm excited. I love the Friday night games and having those fun before, before game bashes. Health and safety protocols at Durfee High School will also remain in place for the foreseeable future, which definitely is preferred by both Megan and Andro. I don't feel like we are ready. I feel like we should have some other things mandated before we take the mask off. But I'm definitely, will keep my mask on and hopefully other people will keep them on too. Just for, you know, a couple more months. Inside mostly too. Yeah. Because sports outside is different. We don't wear them anymore. But inside, it's a different environment. We're all enclosed. And even though the windows can open still, we're still around people. And the six foot rule isn't in place anymore. So that's one thing too. Some teachers and students are less stressed out about health and safety this year than they were last year. But for others, the need to strictly adhere to protocols means being more comfortable with in-person learning. About COVID, it seems like it's been more relaxed. Yeah. Have some teachers. Some teachers are still strict and still sanitary about it. I know my yearbook advisor is very strict on it. She's always spraying Lysol everywhere in her room. Always still mandating the hand sanitizer. I think I am more stressed because of how relaxed we are with the pandemic and the rules. Yeah, it's no joke. Their biggest hope for this year is for the new building to maintain its newness and for everyone to enjoy the small added details which can be found all around the building. I hope the school can stay in the condition that it's in. Oh yeah, the new building, I hope. Yes. Yeah. This is a beautiful school. If anyone that's listening can come in and see it when we have our tours again. Oh yeah. You'll love it. All the wood and all the ceiling tiles are my favorite part. The little derpy emblems. And there are so many tiny little details that make it what it is, and it's very it's beautiful. beautiful. I love it. We would like to thank the students from Durfee High School in Fall River and Needham High School for joining us on this month's podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please navigate to our website, jfynet.org, which also features a wealth of commentary, dialogue, and free scholastic resources, including this monthly podcast, to support all educational communities. Thank you for joining us. For JFY Networks, I'm Greg Cunningham.